right. We are on Facebook. Got it. Bam. All right. What's happening? We are live. Good morning. I know I haven't had a show in a few months uh, like this. I've done some little uh, stop-ins from uh, different tournaments and stuff, some stuff off the mat, but uh, I'm excited to bring the show back. We're going to do uh, an episode. I've got two timelines. If anybody ever wants to come on, I'm doing 7.30 a.m. We'll do like coffee with Dan or some crazy shit like that. And then <laughs> and then I got a night shift because I know that all you wrestlers out there have uh, uh, you're either up early in the morning getting ready or you're done with training at night and you can jump on at night. So I'm trying to trying to bookend everything here so that anybody out there wants to come on. I'm here for you. But today we got a great guest. I, I just met him out at the Southern Scuffle. Uh, he came in sixth there. I uh, had the medical forfeit on the on the fifth place match just due to some some knee stuff, but that's okay. That's cool. He had a hell of a tournament. Uh, was one of the mocks that that made it all the way uh, on the front side, and uh, and I had a hell of a tournament. His name is Fabian Gutierrez. He's the UTC 125 pounder. Uh, just an absolute hammer. It was just an honor to watch him wrestle this weekend. Uh, really, really cool. Uh, but he's a two-time state placer, one-time state champ out of Commerce City, Colorado. And he's a two-time national qualifier uh, on the D1 level over there for uh, UTC. And uh, as I said, six at Scuffle, he's a six-year senior, and he's on with us this morning. So, yo, man, what's up? What a great weekend. Welcome to the show. I'm honored to have you. Uh, yep, appreciate it. Thank you for having me as well. Uh, yeah, man, totally dope this weekend, man. You had a you had a hell of a run there. Uh, who knows what would have happened in the, in the final match if you were feeling healthy there? Uh, but you you made one heck of a run. I, I think you guys had like five mocks or something that made it all the way to that peer, that point, or at least all the way into the quarterfinals, right? Yeah, we had about five in the quarters, and then we kind of just whoever went it went their own way, um, but. I think we had a pretty good tournament as a team. Yeah, man, it was great. And it was great to be up there. I have never been to a college tournament like that before. I've been to, um, you know, Omi has invited me up to some NCAA, some NAI stuff, but I haven't been to anything where, I mean, you guys had 30 teams or something, whatever the crazy mm -hmm. amount was. And, and the level of competition was insane. Man, what does, you know, you're a six year senior over there, um, it's your final run. Uh, you've qualified twice, uh, but, you know, we're on the scuffle right now. You've been there six years. What, what does that scuffle mean to you guys? How much do you look forward to it? And, and, and how much fun is that weekend? Uh, so the scuffle means a lot to the team, um, just UTC in general. Uh, it gets people to come and see how beautiful a city Chattanooga is. Um, I mean, I love the city of Chattanooga. It's, it's beautiful to me. That's why I kind of chose to came here and uh, wrestle. But um, just just also growing our our sport of wrestling and growing our team as a uh, growing uh, our team for the university um, just gets our team out there. Shows that we actually love wrestling, um, and it also just gives everybody a chance to compete at the highest level. Um, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of important to us just cause it, it kind of replicates the national tournament. Um, two and days. Guys, yeah. And your fans, I mean, your fans come out, the UTC fans are there, they're in the building. Um, you can, you know, when a UTC, you know, when a mock is on the mat because you can hear it, right? Yeah. It matter, yeah. <clears throat> I may be on mat one, <clears throat> and you hear the noise on Matt four, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, there must be a mock in the building. Um, it was cool, man. Now, is this the deepest run that you personally have had at this tournament? Yes, I have. So um, I've made it to blood rounds. I made it to blood round two years in a row. Um, lost to the same dude uh, two years in a row, Jacob Camacho from NC State. Um, I always wanted to place, uh, but – I guess this this year was the year. Um, it's just it's hard to it's hard to like place whenever every kid in the bracket is tough. Every it doesn't matter who you wrestle. It's just that elite of a tournament that whenever well, you go out there, it's gonna be hard. 
especially at 125, you guys were real deep. Oh yeah. Um, it was it was a great it was a great bracket to watch. I had a, I had a bunch of fun there. So you know you're you're uh, you're a kid in Colorado. You're growing up. Um, beautiful state. Uh, I, I know I talked to you about it. I love visiting Colorado. And um, how did you get into wrestling? What 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 made that the sport? I know um, you you spent some time on the football field, the soccer field. You dove. You were just kind of an all around athlete, but. <laughs> What made wrestling the one that kind of you stuck with? So uh, my dad kind of put me in wrestling uh, when I was young, just because that's what he did. Uh, he used to wrestle. He started wrestling in eighth grade. Um, he fell in love with the sport, kind of got him outside of a, got him out of some trouble um, when he was in school. So he just thought, you know, um, I'll throw it, I'll throw him in there. So it's kind of like a family thing now. Uh, Everybody wrestles in my family, um, but it just, I mean, I played a lot of sports. I played baseball, like you, like you said, the other ones, football, soccer. Um, the reason why I, I just started wrestling is just because, I mean, I'm kind of small. I've always been small. I mean, my senior year when I played football, uh, I was like 115 pounds starting cornerback. Wow. Uh, made second second team all conference for uh, my football team. We also were in the, the hardest conference. We used to be 5A, but our team was not as good. So uh, they, dropped, they dropped us to 4A and put us in the hardest 4A division where everyone in our conference made it to the playoffs but us. So um, <laughs> I guess it was just for me wrestling, it's just, it just came natural to me. Um, never really had to worry about if someone weighed 200 pounds and I had to go and tackle them to the, to the football <laughs> but field. Nowadays you'd be a slot receiver. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I also don't want to get hit by a linebacker. <laughs> these, little, <laughs> these little fast guys. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I was reading, you were, you were, you were an honor roll kid. You were, uh, you got a, a, I forget the name of the scholarship, but you got a great scholarship for UTC. Um, obviously education is something that's important to you. How would you, how would you say the discipline of wrestling has, has helped you in the classroom? Yeah. Um, sometimes, sometimes school could get hard, but, um, just knowing like, especially my dad's always been on me about it. Just having your grades there. I mean, if you don't have good grades, you can't wrestle. So it's, it's <laughs> just, a, it's just as simple as that. You just, you know, uh, things get tough, things get hard, especially in school, college, you know, classes for studying and just big assignments. But it's just about putting your foot down, being able to just do it. Half half the battle is showing up to class and doing your work. So Cool, man. So coming out of the state, you're obviously a three-time placer. One of those places was first. Um, I'm sure schools from all over the country were talking to you. <clears throat> Excuse me. What made uh, what made UTC home? What made that place say? What made you say, man, this is this is the place for me? And now, obviously, you've spent all six years there. Yeah. So, I mean, um, going through whenever I was looking for colleges, um, my team never really went to any big any big uh, tournaments, especially like moving to the south. Now, you know, everybody goes to Super Thirty Two. Um, like all those other big tournaments. I never was really into it. The only big tournament I went to was Virginia Duel, our uh, senior nationals in Virginia Beach. Um, my senior year, I ended up taking third. Uh, but oh, I'm trying to think. Let's see. Can you repeat the question again? My bad. UTC. You picked UTC. Oh, yeah. So it's just I have family that live here in Nashville. Um, so it's my mom's auntie or my mom's sister. She's my auntie. Um, she, it's just kind of good to have someone close, but as well, um, I didn't really have no one looking at, a, at me. I kind of got in hold, a hold of, uh, Esslinger through my, um, assistant coach in high school. His brother used to wrestle here, uh, Ben Reichel. Um, so I kind of had a, a link there. I came and watched the scuffle my senior year with my best friend, um, 
first time I'd ever been, first time I'd ever watched a, a, a big tournament like that, close to looking like nationals. And I just fell in love with the city. I fell in love with with the team. Um, met met Scotty Boinkin. Uh, my sophomore year, I came to Chattanooga to a uh, wrestling camp because we were tra- we drove from Colorado down to Florida for Disney duels. Uh, on the way, we made made a stop in Chattanooga, and just I kind of kept kind of kept my uh, kind of kept my name out there for Esslinger. Just kept in contact with him. Said this is the dream school I wanted to go to. Chattanooga is the place for me. Um, I chose this school just because, I mean, it'd be hard to get a starting spot at the University of Iowa when I could, <laughs> when I could do just as good at UTC and have a starting spot. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And <clears throat> so during your during your your time there, the transition to the Rochelle family, right? Uh, Rochelle came in, took over, but not just Kyle. I mean, his whole family mm-hmm. is 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 deeply involved. Um, obviously you were recruited by one guy and then right Rochelle came in. Uh, but man, how important is that family now to the UTC program and, and tell us all they do. I mean, even the wife, I, I, I was speaking to some people this week and I got to meet her briefly. Uh, but everybody you talk to says, Obviously, Kyle's a great guy and a great coach, and he great, great program, great assistant coaches. But they say she's like the rock for you guys. Is that true? Yeah, she is. Um, and she does, she does, she does a lot for us. You know, uh, especially when uh, Allie, whenever we're get, uh, feeling sick, uh, whenever we're whatever we need, um, she's there. She'll give us uh, vitamins, oregano, put it in some orange juice stabilize and strengthen our immune system um she's kind of someone that I've learned to not lean on but ask for help especially in those areas um also want to say congratulations to them for having their baby Otto so she she's still she's still around even though she just had the baby she's still around helping us Oh, she was running around with a three week to her chest. Yeah. Right? Yeah. She's carrying yeah. food in and, and helping the guys. Yeah, it was it's crazy. Yeah. So I mean, they they treat they treat us like family. You know, we might we we might be their athletes, but man, she, like we're family and she does so much. It it doesn't matter what it could be, it could be for uh for the alumni, it could be just for food you know she goes and buys food for us to keep in our lounge uh so we can have something to snack on after practice uh and and how much does she um and i, I know sorry kyle i know you're a great guy but <laughs> from everything i heard she's the one i know i'm sure kyle I, I love the guy i've had him on twice great guy but um how hard is she on you guys as far as grades classrooms showing up and doing the right things forget wrestling but the right things that are gonna make a future for you in life because when you talk to these guys and girls yeah they love seeing you win on the wrestling mat and obviously they have a job to do and to bring wins to the but ultimately when you talk to Kyle and other coaches their their dream is to see you on Wall Street their dream is to see you in a doctor's album their dream seeing business owning your own property you know things like that and how, how do they make sure that you're doing the right thing there? Yeah, so um, I would give a shout out to TJ Rochelle. Uh, he's really big on keeping us uh, going to class, keeping us going, getting good grades. You know, if we have study hall, he's on it. Um, he's probably one of the bigger components of pushing us to do better in class outside of wrestling. Um, I mean, in college, yeah, we came to wrestle, but uh, we also came to get our degree, and that's that's the number one par- priority right there. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, what are your um, what are your what are your goals? I know obviously you've been a wrestler your whole life, but um, looking at everything you've done in the classroom, obviously education uh, is something that you're good at. Also, so uh, what are some of your goals after college? 
Mm, so I graduated last uh, last spring with a sports management degree. I plan on furthering my my career in the sport of wrestling. Uh, I kind of want to be a coach like Kyle is, eventually a head coach. Nice. Um, I kind of just feel like I've been around the sport so long that I'd be able to give back. Um, don't, don't know where that's going to take me yet. Um, still kind of just focusing on wrestling this season, but uh, I plan on coaching somewhere and showing uh, other kids what I have to offer. Nice. Are you uh... – do you, do you want to continue your education, get a master's degree, do anything like that prior um, to even? As of right now, uh, I'm just taking uh, random classes. Uh, not really looking to get a master's degree right now. Um, just kind of just. Sometimes that's good, right? Like maybe there's classes now that you always wanted to take to, to learn kind of something, but you it wasn't part of your career path, right? Or your, yeah. To get your sports manager degree. Now you're like, you know, I always want to take like super intelligence or some crazy thing like that. Yeah. <laughs> dip into it. That's, that's pretty cool, man. So, <clears throat> excuse me. We just went through the scuffle. What's, um, what's next on the lineup? I know you guys got, I'm sure you guys got duels coming up, but um, what are some of the next big things coming up for you guys at UTC? <clears throat> yeah. So um, we're, not this weekend, but next weekend we will be traveling to Virginia Duels. Um, I don't, I don't think we we did not go last year, uh, but it's definitely something, definitely a tournament that is super good. You know, um, we're gonna be wrestling Oklahoma. Uh, they have some ranked kids. Uh, it's just, it's just a good, good little uh, duel tournament to go and wrestle. Um, We'll be beginning conference, but this is probably besides wrestling Indiana. This is one of our last uh, outside conference uh, yeah. matchups that we can have. What is there? Um, first, so do you still get uh, even at your point in your career? Is there still like I don't know? You're wrestling Oklahoma, and there's a kid there that you're like, oh man, that's cool. I get to wrestle that guy. Is there? Are there still stuff like that that comes on or uh, or at this point in your career, is it like, okay, you're the 125 and whoever's across from you, do you still get some, some like coolness and saying, oh, cool, one day I'll say I wrestled that guy? Yeah. So, um, yeah, for sure. Uh, I, I was like that when we wrestled uh, the University of Iowa and I got to wrestle Spencer Lee. Uh, but, but this year, you know, I'm kind of just grateful for the opportunity to compete. So it doesn't matter who's across from me. I mean, I'll get <laughs> yeah, to wrestle. After COVID, I get to... after COVID, everybody's grateful now, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just, I'll get, like, if you want, if I get to wrestle you, it's my opportunity to wrestle you and it's your opportunity to wrestle me. Like, yeah. That's um, cool. Yeah, yeah I was, I, speaking of Spencer Lee, it's a shame. He, yeah, but it's good that he's fixing himself up, right? I mean. Oh, yeah, for sure. Got to get healthy. Yeah, I mean, uh, but it's cool. Like you see that in like football and basketball, like when the young guys come up and they get to play ball or, or, or something against one of their idols they looked up to their whole life and then they get to wrestle that person or play basketball. They like take their jersey off. Or I remember watching like the football game where somebody brought a ball to Brady after the after the game was like, can you sign it for me? And he's like a rookie, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's cool, man. We all have that, right? Um mm -hmm. <clears throat> so uh national qualifier twice i'm sure you're looking to place this year god willing right um, yeah is is chattanooga going to be home for you now or, or do you think you'll end up uh back in colorado um so i've had a lot of people ask me that just because it's coming up on my last year but um when i moved away from home i kind of fell in love with the south i've never never felt any Southern comfort before, you know, it's something that is real. Uh, funny story, my freshman year, I went out to eat with uh, one of my roommate's parents and I was never really taught, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. So anytime she would ask me a question, I would say yes or no, or 
but I wasn't trying to be rude. And he ended up telling me like, you have to say yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. She thinks you're being rude. Like she's getting mad. And I was like, oh. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. So yeah, ever since then, like everybody, yes, yes sir. ma'am. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. So. If you weren't taught that or you weren't brought up that way, and it wasn't that you were brought up bad, you were brought up great, obviously. Look at look what yeah. but different cultures, different places teach different things, right? I mean, mm-hmm. yeah. My, um, my wife and kids are Hispanic, right? So I understand that culture, right? And it's mm-hmm. different because everything is in Spanish, right? It's not... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my kids, like, it's funny, like, somebody will curse or something around Daniel and he'll be like, don't worry, I get cursed at in multiple languages. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, you know mama's mad at him when the Spanish comes out. <laughs> oh, yeah. You get the, get the chunk out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know he's in trouble when I start hearing that. <laughs> that's crazy yeah man that's um i was gonna ask you so you you you, you miss like the colorado bison the trout or, or you, you fall in love with that tennessee barbecue yeah the the, the tennessee barbecue for sure <laughs> uh what's funny though is um here they we have lookout mountain uh in chattanooga you know and everyone's like Oh, that's such a big mountain, that big mountain. But I'm like, well, I'm from Colorado, and I we have a, a 14 or Pikes Peak, you know, just huge yeah. mountains, just covered in snow. And people here are like, "You guys want to go climb a mountain?" I'm like, you "Mean a hill, kind of." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, I agree. I wanted to. I, I actually Monday, so we stayed there all day Monday, and that was something that we we're looking forward to. But it snowed, so yeah. Being Florida boys, my son was like, man, I want to go out there. Yeah. <laughs> he had to, he went and picked up breakfast and he was like, my fingers are freezing. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh man, it's crazy. So you, uh, it sounds like you found a home down there. Oh yeah, for sure. I love it down here. You think you'll, uh, you'll stay on it if, if, uh, if uh, as like, uh, what, what do they do where, where you've graduated, but you can stay on as like a coach or something if you wanted to. I think to. it'd be like, it might be like a, I don't know what they would call it. I know, um, I know Rod Jones, he stressed for us. Uh, he yeah. did one of, he did like something like that. I mean, I wouldn't mind uh, staying here at chat uh, just because um, I know a lot of the guys, it, it wouldn't be such a big change for me. But at the same time, I'm not sure. Uh, how they would how they would be able to change their head if I was to become a coach you know just because I'm so close with these guys on the team um sometimes it's hard to get it's it's hard to switch that from being oh I'm your friend to being now I'm your coach you know yes I think there was um uh who's the guy up at Lehigh that is at your weight that now coaches there uh he was a national champ Oh, Darian Cruz. Yeah, so I'm I'm sure, um, I'm sure he had some of that, right? Because I think there were still yeah. some guys on the team that he knew personally, as far as friendship and stuff like that. But I mean, eventually, you go. Eventually, that's going to happen, right? Whether it's in business yeah. or anywhere. Um, what uh, you know? What What do you think before we before we leave? Um, how much do you owe to the sport of wrestling for the person you've become? Uh, I owe a lot to the sport. I mean, um, the sport is something that gave me a purpose. It gave me a pathway. Um, you know, sometimes it's hard to find that pathway and, and wrestling kind of was just it for me. You know, it, it wrestling came naturally wrestling. I fell in love with the sport. Not not a lot of people fall in love with combat sports, you know, especially just because you don't want to get beat up every day. There's days in the room where I just get absolutely demolished, you know, and I'm j- I just want to be like, well, I want to quit, but I just have that drive every day to be like, you know what? No, I'm not going to quit. I'm just, I'm going to keep going. Uh, definitely, it's definitely pushed me to become not 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 a better push me to become a better wrestler. But not only that, it pushed me to become a better man, you know. Um, 
I've met a lot of people through the sport. Uh, I've met a lot of people that I don't even know that support me. Um, one year at the scuffle, I was, it was not, it was two years ago. I had just got done winning going into the quarterfinals and I'm running to go, um, uh, get my cool down in and these two random little kids are like hey can you sign my uh poster first time I had ever done that and I was like <laughs> you know it, it's crazy it's crazy that like people are watching and you don't even know you know so um but did you get to, did you get to sign a uh, a headgear or anything this weekend I did not I didn't make it to the final so oh is that only the final kids yeah 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 that's pretty dope uh, you know I I have uh you're somebody that had a dream to go to college and you're somebody that came from a, a wrestling community that really didn't, wasn't able to kind of take you to a lot of these big national tournaments due to funding or due to money or due to whatever. And it's something, it's a discussion that I had. I was actually asking, <clears throat> excuse me, Mike Mouth from Flow this weekend, because there's something on my mind and I wanted to give back and I want to do some sort of foundation. And one of the things he said to me, and I and I and I had this feeling was there are clubs and kids around the nation, just like yourself, who maybe if you would have had the opportunity to go to the grappler, the NHSCAs, the Virginia duels, the the Super 32s, things like that, the the landscape would have opened wider for you. Obviously, yep. looking at what's happened now, you found the right place, you found home, you're around the right people, and it worked out, right? But there's a lot of kids out there that have that same dream that you had, but they're stuck at a place that maybe they don't get the exposure. Right. Mm -hmm. But talking to a lot of coaches, you kind of did the, the, the thing that they said, what, what would you tell kids that are, that are stuck in those programs, not stuck in those programs, but are in those programs and they're doing very well. What would you tell them to do to be able to get these coaches to find them to, uh, to get them some exposure to see where they are so they can get to college. Yeah. So I would say reach out to, to the coaches, you know, um, a lot of, uh, that's like one of the biggest things, you know, is being able to contact them, show them what kind of person you are, you know, um, making a good first impression, uh, is always a big deal, especially to me. Like, if you don't make a first good impression, then am I going to like you? You know, like, I'm not a very picky person, but, you know, and also just, just, just working hard, you know, um, a lot of, a lot of coaches don't really, a lot of coaches focus on if you are fighting hard in a match, you know, it, it, and, and if you just are just giving up in matches, if you kind of just, you know, lollygagging, if you can see that, like, if you have a flow match on there, you know, it's just like, these coaches want you, want you, want a wrestler that's going to fight, they want somebody who's going to put their all in, you know, and um, if you work hard, just keep doing everything you do every day, you know, uh, in high school, never had that exposure, but um, my senior year, I started running every night, probably around eight, eight o'clock at night, I would run about two, two and a half to three miles. Um, and it, it just made me better. You know, it just made me just push me that much further. Uh, one of my high school, my high school coach, Jared DeGuero, he, uh, he's a D2 national champion for Adams State. He always used to say champions are made outside of the wrestling room when no one is watching. So. So keep up. And listen, uh, your proof of it, you came from a, a small city up there in Commerce City. You found the right coach, the right program. And, and if, you know, coaches out there will tell me that, look, there's a lot of really good kids out there that we don't know about or we don't get to see because they don't get to be at these tournaments um, that we go to, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I really want to work on something to see how how you can create some sort of fund or funding to be able to little towns like that, because uh, you talk to a lot of people and they're like, man, I, there's once, a, once a season, there's a kid that comes out of, I don't know, Los Angeles, California, or Commerce City, Colorado, or Montana somewhere, mm -hmm. and they beat the number one kid at this tournament. And everyone's like, who the hell was that? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because that kid, has always been there, but he 
can't afford to be at <clears throat> a tournament A, tournament B, tournament C, tournament D, tournament E, yeah. right? So he doesn't get seen. So he shows up and nobody knows who he is and they make him like the 16th seed or something and he knocks the board <laughs> off and they're like, yo, what the fuck just happened, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah, I mean, a lot of those kids, uh, I, I wish there was something out there that could be created where you can create that or maybe these tournaments can create and I, I know I, I think I've seen some of them do that where they'll create like 10 spots or something you know maybe these tournaments can create 10 spots and those spots include you know the airfare the hotel and the and the, and the spot and, and and it's for kids that are in these programs that um that should get an opportunity to come yeah for sure or, or I like least, that idea at least maybe not Maybe not the super 32, but maybe the 32 qualifier. At mm. least give them a shot to qualify. Give them, give them that opening, right? Yeah. You know, as far as NHSCA and things like that, yeah, that would be awesome. But, yeah, well, man, congratulations to you. What a great weekend you had. Um, you guys have an amazing program there uh, from, from Bud Hennenball, who's doing big things because, you know, he was coached and graduated, wrestled, and then – all the way through to the Rochelle family and, and all the great kids that you guys have on your, on your team. I mean, getting to meet all you guys, you can really see um, that culture, right? Like you guys have some really good, good kids on that team with great heads on their shoulders and, and just respectful young men. And it, it was awesome to experience that. Yes, sir. Sounds good. Hey man. So you got to, I don't know if you have a class now because you graduated. So maybe you have like arts and crafts or something that you take just to occupy your time, but, <laughs> but I'll let you get back to it, man. And good luck this year, man. I, I hope we can stay in touch. I hope to see you get down the road and I, man, I hope to see you on the podium. Yes, sir. That's the plan. <laughs> All right, brother. Take it easy. Yep. You too. Thank you. Yes, sir.